Well, this is embarrassing. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's working. I did a thing. Perfect. All right, let me just close this out. Can I? Nope. That's not the right button. That isn't the right button at all. Hi. Go away. Hi, chat. Okay. Gosh, that's embarrassing. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Gata, and welcome to Coop Cakes Live. Um, I think there's just one person in here right now. Rad, can you hear me? No? Guess Rad isn't here. That's cool. Uh, today, we are going to be making key lime pie cupcakes. Um, gosh. I hit start and didn't have everything out. Good Lord. All right. Um, so this is a recipe that... Can I put this back? There we go. Uh, this is a recipe that I have never tried before. This is brand new. Um, I haven't even tried it in theory. I... I'm going to start with grabbing the actual right bowl. Hold on. Wah. Yeah, so today we are making key lime pie cupcakes. Um, the, the weird thing um, that I'm going to do is that I'm going to start off with making the uh, frosting first um, because it is going to be a whipped cream frosting as opposed to the buttercream frosting that I made during my last stream. And I also forgot to grab the heavy cream. Ah, that's cool. That's neat. That's great. Is there anything else I need? No. No, I don't think there is. All right. We are good to go. Yes. Um, uh, we are making whipped cream frosting this week as opposed to buttercream frosting, and that requires that it be done very, very quickly. The reason why is because in order to make the, the heavy whipping cream here actually turn into the frosting, the bowl needs to be frozen for at least an hour, both the bowl and the paddles. And they need to stay cold or it's not gonna do what I want them to do. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make the frosting first, get that in the fridge to keep it cold, and then we'll move on to actually making the cakes. So what do we need to make this frosting? Well, we have the heavy cream. We need a half a cup of powdered sugar, which I have right here. And Two, uh, two cups, rather, of this whipping cream. And we should have exactly two cups of whipping cream in this container. Um, it's one pint, which, if memory serves, two cups to a pint, two pints to a quart, four quarts to a gallon, that's how it goes. I think that's how it goes. All right. So there's that. Now let's get the half a cup of powdered sugar. I could, I wish I could just stick the, the half cup right into the thing, but the, the lid, the lip is a bit too small for it to actually fit. So we're gonna have to do it like this. That's about a half a cup. Close enough to me. Did I start quietly? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Is my microphone not working? Oh. Oh, okay, you can't hear me. Phew. All right, then. Hey, Sue, Rad, Ars, nice to see you here. Twitch has been doing something weird these past two days. People have been having issues with connectivity. So for a minute there, I was worried that my audio wasn't going through, but if you can hear me then, that's fine. That's good. I'm glad to see you all came back. 
Rad says, just didn't notice that you started. Thanks for welcoming me. Of course, you are always welcome. Always welcome. I don't know if you heard my opening intro bit um, about how since we are doing a whipped cream frosting uh, this week as opposed to buttercream, I'm doing that first because the bowl and the paddles have to be chilled or it's not going to do what I want it to do. So unfortunately, I got to start this off with some good old fashioned re. So um, mute me for a second. Sorry. I'm working on a solution to this, I swear. All right. It's not thickening up. Good lord. Yeah, no, I swear to god I'm working on a solution to that reissue. Um, I'm looking into investing in a wireless box that I can plug into my camera and then have a, a box on my hip that plugs into my actual microphone that I can turn on and off when um, I don't need to mix things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that's how that's how I feel right now. Honestly, like I, I, I've done this before. It's worked fine. I don't know why now that I'm on stream, it doesn't want to work. It's bubbling though, so let me give it another go. Hold on. Almost there. The uh, the chat bot I have in this Twitch group that I'm in just kicked off and alerted everyone that I'm streaming. They're going to come in and all they're going to hear is re. This is going to be a great first impression. All right. So, yes, we are making key lime. Oh, hello, June. Good to see you again. Uh, we are making key lime pie cupcakes, and the frosting is actually also going to be flavored with lime. So, before I finish this off, because it's getting thick, it's almost at the consistency that I want. Um, before I get there, I'm going to put in, uh, let's see here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. And I have that, yep, right here. I know, doesn't it sound good? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Cup. Okay. And hopefully this works. The recipe says that it should, but my experience with um, with adding fruit juice to cake stuff has not been fantastic. So, one last round of re, and I'll be able to talk to you properly. So just one second. I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> Man. 
fantastic. Perfect. And there we go. I'm really glad it actually decided to thicken up for me. I was worried that it wouldn't. So, yep, we have the whipped cream. Rad says, you use the same brand of key lime juice as I do. It's the only brand they sold at my supermarket. I was hoping to get a, a non-name brand one because those tend to be on the cheaper side. And this is my very first time trying this recipe, so I didn't want to uh, break the bank on it. But this was the only actual key lime juice they had, so beggars can't be choosers. Give me just one second. I'm going to pop this in the fridge so that it stays cold and it keeps its consistency. And then I'll be right back. Publix doesn't have key lime juice. Actually, Publix is where I got this stuff. Which um, also explains why it's a little more expensive than I'd like it to be because it's Publix. Bless them. Alrighty then. Rinse these off real quick. So yeah, no, I, uh, I was a little worried about, uh, about this recipe. I knew that I wanted to give it a go because who doesn't like key lime pie? Um, but in my experience, adding fruit juice to cake stuff hasn't worked out so well for me. Um, adding extracts is one thing, but this recipe called for straight up juice. I tried once to um, make a fruit juice flavored frosting. My wife had this idea for a cupcake that she wanted to call Persephone, where it's a dark chocolate cake, but the frosting is um, flavored after a pomegranate, referencing the, uh, the Greek myth. And she desperately wanted me to try to make it a reality. So I gave it a go, but for whatever reason, when I tried to add the, the juice to the uh, frosting mix, the entire thing just kind of like separated, like, like the fat and the juice just like did not want to mix. It was like seeping juice out of the frosting. And it looked, it looked really cool. It'd be something I might want to reproduce for like a Halloween setting because it looked kind of like the piece were bleeding. Um, but it, it went to, in eating it, it did not, it didn't quite work. So I'm still unsure why that happened. It might just be the um, chemical balance of the uh, actual juice that I used because it was pasteurized. It was for drinking as opposed to for baking. So that might have made a difference. But I haven't had a chance to give it a go since. So... When I, when I made the decision I was going to go with this recipe for this week, um, I had a little trepidation there. But so far, it's working out fine. So, now, on to the actual cake. Uh, oven is already preheated. I got my butter all softened over there. That was all done before the stream. We just got to get it all together and get it into a cupcake tin. All right, and as with last week, I'm starting from a white mix. And I am going to be doctoring it up to make it super fancy and delicious. I don't know if you guys saw on my Twitter, but um, right after the stream, I taste tested those ice cream cupcakes, ice cream cone cupcakes from last time. Um, they were pretty good. They were pretty good. Uh, only downside, um, the cone itself went stale really quickly, which may have something to do with the, the brand of the cone I used or because there wasn't an actual like container to put them in afterwards. Um, so they went stale really, really quickly. So in the future, that's a kind of recipe that I would want to make like the day of an event as opposed to like making it beforehand and then bringing it to. So in the event you guys decided you wanted to give those ice cream cone cupcakes a go. That's my hot tip of the evening. Now, I softened the butter, but I didn't put it within arm's reach. I've got to stop doing this. I really, really, really got to stop doing this. All right. 
Now, let's see here. So, starting with the white mix, we are going to add one stick of softened butter. <laughs> we are going to add two of my farm fresh eggs. If you decide doing this at home, add three. Um, the eggs that my chickens lay are larger than the average egg, and that's not just me boasting about my fantastic birds. That is the truth. Generally speaking, if you're starting from a box mix, you want to add one extra egg for every full egg that it re requests in the basic recipe. I say full egg because white mixes generally call for egg whites as opposed to a whole egg. And in, a, in replacing the yolk, um, they ask for a third egg white, so it balances out to be two regular size eggs. But we want three regular size eggs um, that'll um, puff up the cake and make it taste a little more bodily sound. That's not, a, that's not the right phrase for it. It's really hard for me to put into words things that I only know as like texture and taste that I myself have experienced, but I don't know the words too, so sorry about that. Um, now, this recipe does call for key lime juice, um, and it assumes that the person who was making this recipe um, is starting off from a lemon cake mix. So what I'm going to be doing is adding some lemon extract to make this cake into... Jun says, you should stream a showing of different consistencies. I considered that, at least with the frosting. Uh, last time, when I just blazed through putting the frosting tip in the bag, and everyone was like, wait, 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 hold up, what was that? Um, I feel like at some point I am going to have to have a stream where I don't make anything in particular. I just, like, show you guys some stuff that I, I normally just breeze through. Um, but that's then, not now. Um, but yes, one of these days I will have a stream where I just make a bunch of different cupcakes and I alter what's in each one and show you how they visibly change or how the taste and whatnot change depending on what you add to it or don't add to it. I'll, I'll add, add, add that to the list. Um, where was I? Yes, so we are going to make this into a lemon cake mix first before adding in the extra stuff that'll turn into a key lime mix. Now, when I was reading this recipe, um, and it called for a lemon cake mix first. I was a little confused, but I guess it does kind of make sense. When we think citrus, it, for us, at least in America, I don't know how it is elsewhere, um, lemon is kind of like the base. Orange has too obvious a flavor. Um, lime has this like aftertaste to it, at least in my experience. Um, so lemon is kind of like the generic. When you think citrus, you think lemon flavored things. So I'm assuming because unlike lemon juice, key lime juice doesn't have as strong a flavor. It wants me to start off with a lemon base so that it tastes citrusy without being too overpoweringly lime. So we're gonna do that. Um, and we are going to do that by adding one teaspoon of, um, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of lemon extract. And do this, unfortunately, my actual teaspoon measure is out and about with the wife for the puppies. Um, so I have this half teaspoon measure, so I'm gonna do four of these, just so I don't confuse you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I can smell that lemon already. Fantastic. All right. And then I am going to add um, Let's see, half a cup, I know half a cup of the lime juice and then half a cup of water. Normally I switch the water in my mixes out with milk, but because I have never tried this before, I don't feel like risking it. This is only the second stream. I don't want to have an abject failure in my hands this early, like, eesh. So let me grab, let me rinse this out real quick as I used it for the powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. 
And nothing is a failure, it's just experience. Those are wise words to live by. However, I already promised some of these cupcakes to somebody else in exchange for something. So I can't mess these up too badly. They have to be edible, otherwise I have no bargaining chip. What's the point of having cupcakes if you can't use them to blackmail people? That, that, that's my personal philosophy. All right. So, one half a cup of lime juice, and this feels like a lot of lime juice, but it's replacing half of the water. So, here goes. Whoop. All right. Ugh, citrus in that. Now, one half a cup of water. Brad, I will not respond to that in any detail, as this stream will be archived. However, for me, that is every night. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. We have, all right, ba, ba, ba. and last but not least, something I also forgot to grab, because of course I did. We need to have the zest of lime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. I thought I was doing so well, guys. You know, I went through the list of I need this, I need that, and I made sure, yes, a real lime. One real lime. Um, ah, shit. Well, it had to happen eventually. It isn't a goddess stream unless you guys take a roller coaster dive at least once. I am working on it, though. I mentioned earlier the wireless boxes that I'm planning on investing in. Soon, this roller coaster thing will be a thing of the past, hopefully. As will me having this thing obviously just flailing about in front of the camera. All right. So yes, we need uh, a teaspoon of zest, um, which unfortunately I do not have one of those fancy uh, hand zesters with a handle where you can just go shika 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 and then I'm done. So I'm going to have to use uh, a cheese grater. It'll do. So. Uh, and disclaimer, I did make sure to um, clear off this counter before I started. It's clean enough you could eat off of it. So. Not some weirdo that just scrapes food off of countertops. Alrighty then. So, we're going to hang on to this because we're gonna, probably going to use them a bit later. No, I'm not going to lick the... Do you want proof that it's clean? Do you, is this a test? You want me to lick the counter? This is kind of weird and not really my, like, this isn't, this isn't the, the group I was aiming at with this, but, I mean, if it'll make y'all feel better. Okay. Uh, there, I've licked it. it, it it's clean. Yeah, yeah, I did it. I did it, Sue. I did it just to prove you wrong. This counter is perfectly clean. All right, then. Um... Jun asks, how do you know when it is a teaspoon? Um, I really, really don't, actually. Um, but I do have this teaspoon measurer right here. Um, not anymore, you li oh, for f You got me, you got me there. No, it is true, this counter is not perfectly clean anymore considering I just licked it. Yes, I am an absolute madman. Don't worry, I got, I got Lysol. There. Do you all feel better now? You pulled one over on Olgata. 
You made him look like a fool in front of the entire internet. Yeah, yeah, no, it is lemon cleaner, actually. That, this is unrelated. This, lemon just smells nice. Shut up. Jun says, you need lime cleaner. That would have been thematically appropriate. But I did not, I, I did not expect to need to pull that onto camera <laughs> while I was doing this. So hindsight is 2020. Um, now, let me grab this. I am going to see how much zest we got going on here and how much more we need. Mm -hmm. So here's a half, and I'll put this in. But up. Ugh. It smells like um, um, Fruit Loops. Not a big fan of Fruit Loops tasting, but I love how they smell. Yes, at least the cleaner was in reach. Well, I, I, I went over and cleaned the entire kitchen before I started this. Uh, yeah, so this is a, about right. I could be... I could be a little more specific about it and make sure it's exactly one teaspoon, but I think that's good. This is going away. Goodbye. And let me just get the rest of this off the counter. Beautiful. All right, then. So, what do we got here? All right, so we have the mix. The lemon extract, the lime juice, the eggs, um, the butter, the zest. I think that's it. It's throwing me off because normally I'd have like a thing of milk here, but I didn't use milk this time, so I keep thinking I'm missing something. But nope, nope. Everything is in here. So now it comes time for everyone's favorite, and hopefully the last time we got to do this during this stream. Free! I'm going to have to get like an emote or something. If I ever reach affiliate and start getting emotes and whatnot, the first thing I'm going to add is an emote just for this mixer. Just it's screaming. All right, here we go. Mute me, guys. take a little taste of this and see what it's like. Mm. That lime is actually pretty darn strong. I can't tell if it's made worse or better with a lemon extract. It's not strong enough for me to not want more. And when it's baked, of course, that taste will mellow out a little bit because then you'll have like, you know, it'll actually be a cake. Um, but I'm liking it so far. I'm liking it. I'm sorry you all can't have a taste too. Suckers. Um, but I'd like to think that um, you all could easily recreate this yourself on your own time if you felt so inclined. Jun asks, if you had too much lime, could you add like milk or something? That would definitely uh, water down the taste, ironically enough, um, but it also might water down the chemical reaction of the baking process. Um, baking is just really delicious chemistry. Mm, very delicious chemistry. Um, but if you don't do it just right, you can end up completely and totally ruining it. Adding too much liquid in general, not just milk, but just too much liquid in general, um, could absolutely throw off what the final product is. Which is why, even though the box recipe for this mix calls for one cup of water, when it has me add in lime juice, it doesn't have me add in the lime juice on top of that water. It halves the amount of water, so the lime juice then balances out to be about the same amount of liquid that it's meant to be. Um, extracts, on the other hand, are different. 
um, because they are so like jam packed with the flavor you want, you don't really need more than a couple of teaspoons in there, and that doesn't drastically change the um, the chemical composition of the batter itself. I hope that makes sense. I started. I feel like I started more rambling than actually making sense halfway through, though I, I apologize about that. But this batter looks to be about done to me. So I'm gonna kick out these guys, have them sit in the sink. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll wash them off once we get all of this into the oven. Let's see here. Kaiju Cutie has added, has uh, joined the group and Im instantly called me a bitch. Let me allow this. There we go. Hey there, Kaiju. Welcome to the stream. We are making key lime pie cupcakes today and we just finished the batter. It's okay, they, they call me a bitch whenever they see me IRL as well. So it's nothing new. R says, I meant to say earlier, but I like your apron. Thank you very much. I'm quite fond of it myself. Actually, I think I have them in arm's reach. I can show you. I have matching pot holders and a matching glove. Isn't it really cute? It says yummy and sweet on the pot holders, and it says yummy cupcake on the glove. It's really, really, really sweet. I love it. Yeah, one of the greatest things about baking is how much cute kitchen stuff you can get. I adore it. It's so good. It's just, it's just so good. It's so pure. Um, I also have a washcloth and dish towel that match a separate set, but they match. And I did have a set where it was kitty cats baking. Um, but unfortunately, those got, those got damaged. I intend on getting more. If, uh, if I can find a place that will allow me to commission it for a decent price, I'd like to get an apron that has the Coop Cakes logo on it. Um, that would be pretty neat. I wouldn't go any further than that, though. I wouldn't want, like, commissioned, um, pot holders and gloves and whatnot. Um, if only because usually when you go through a commission site for that sort of thing, um, you can't always guarantee the actual quality of the product. Like, it'll look nice, sure. Um, but I want my stuff to work spectacularly well for its intended use, not just look pretty. So, I'm picky is what it, down, it comes down to. Yes, Jun, the cupcakes are better suited to my coop cakes. The cat's baking one was so cute because the cats had their own little aprons on an apron of cats and like they had like like baking implements and they had little chef's hats. It was really, really sweet, but uh, it did not survive one trip through the, dish, the uh, washing machine, sadly, leaving this as my only apron. All right. <laughs> All right. And because I am once again a fool, I forgot to put the scoop. Hold on. Hopefully soon, this will not be a problem anymore. Then I can keep talking to you even while I'm running around grabbing things that I forgot. Alrighty then. So, time to get this batter into these cups and then we'll get these cups into the oven. Yes, Kaiju, the scoop. It's adorable, I love it. After, uh, after we get these in, I actually wanted to do this with you all on stream. Um, it's not all that fantastic. I'm kind of hyping it up for no reason, but last stream, Jun, you asked me exactly how much this scoop actually held in terms of like cups and whatnot. So once we get these cupcakes in, 
I figure we can give that a test so I can stop saying just go out and buy a scoop, you nerds, and actually give you a, um, an amount to do at home. Yes, we're going to test things for science, mostly for baking, but partly for science. So I've started telling people, like IRL, that I'm doing Twitch streams, because last week it was a very select few that I actually gave notices out to. I didn't want to uh, inform too many people until I was sure that I was going to go through with this. Um, but now that I'm sure, I started telling people, you know, exactly what it is that I do. Yeah, I'm, I, I stream on Twitch once a week. I'm going to be making cupcakes and trying out new things. Jin asks, how do people react to that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because mostly it's ups being upset. People are upset with me. Um, they are angry. They think I am joking. Um, one threatened me bo bodily harm. That was fun. Um, I don't know why. It's not like streaming on Twitch isn't what everyone does these days. Um, most of them assumed I was going to stream Minecraft, though. Which, to be fair, is kind of my M.O. Rad says, I know I am angry and want to yell at you, but Rad, Rad, come on. We're friends. We're pals. <laughs> that, uh, that Lenny face doesn't, uh, doesn't give me a lot of confidence, Rad. But no, I think, I'd like to think that I'm a, I do a decent, I'm, I'm a semi- entertaining stream, even if I spend 90% of it scooping things into white papers and rambling to keep you guys entertained. So maybe I'm not the greatest at it yet. Oh well. I'm only two streams in. Sue me. But yeah, no. Most people have assumed that it's going to be for Minecraft, which is low-key, high-key, the dream. Uh, but unfortunately, technology prevents me from doing that yet. Maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll be able to offset these cupcake streams with Minecraft streams and live the dream that I've had ever since 2010. Two thousand twelve? When did Minecraft come out? I think twenty twelve is when Yogg's Cast got it big on YouTube. So I probably should say twenty twelve. Ooh, that's actually a good point. That's something I wanted to mention. I have a story, a cake story from my younger years working in an official bakery. And this isn't necessarily a happy story. It ended up with a very unhappy customer. Um, but it is a funny story because it involves a younger Gata um, making a large, easily preventable mistake. So I want to say it was... 2013, maybe the beginning of 2013, um, I worked for a bakery up in um, middle, uh, the middle of Maine, the heart of the state. I lived in the capital, Augusta, and I worked for a bakery there. And this is around the time that Minecraft was just getting like big enough that like they were printing books on it when the whole like uh, Minecraft for Dummies craze happened. Um, hi Carol, I'm glad you could join us. I'm telling a story that's about cakes but also Minecraft. Um, but yes, so it was around the time that Minecraft was big enough that all the kids knew it. Um, there was merchandise being made of it, but not like official merchandise. This was when all of like the, the unofficial books and whatnot were being printed. Um, a, a mother called into the bakery, and I was there and I answered, and she requested that we make a Minecraft cake for her son, who I believe was turning five. I think it was five. Um, unfortunately, per the rules of that particular bakery, 
we legally could not use any, well, this isn't really the rules of the bakery. It was the rules of the bakery to not accept these orders, but it was law that I couldn't um, make a cake on a licensed product that we did not already have stuff for. So like, if they wanted Mickey Mouse on a cake, if Disney had uh, deemed um, right to talk to our mother company and say, hey, we want you to sell Mickey rings on your cake, we could do that, that's fine. But we couldn't like custom make a cake. We were very, very limited. It was mostly like prints or small toys that came pre-packaged. They were very specific designs we were allowed to do. Um, so this mother called and requested that I make a Minecraft cake for her small child. And unfortunately, um, that was a time before official Minecraft Merc had even made its way to the States. Everything, the, the, the Swedish rights holders were still unsure of exactly how to market their stuff. And they remained that way until Microsoft bought them out. That's, that's neither here nor there. So I had to tell this story to this mother, who was very upset. I suggested that, you know, she could buy a, a small Minecraft toy, they had the unofficial ones everywhere, and plonk it on top of a cake. Call that good? Did that all the time? Um, but she didn't seem to be cool with that. She wanted to buy the one cake, have everything there, and there you go, you're done. Which I can get behind, I understand. Um, and then she asked me, and she said, could you possibly make a regular cake but make it look like the cakes in Minecraft. You guys seen a, what a Minecraft cake looks like? It looks like a vanilla cake with uh, white frosting that doesn't quite reach all the way down. And then it has these red squares on the top, which I'm assuming are meant to be like slices of berry or something. Um, but of course it's square because Minecraft. And I said, you know what? I could do that. That's a good workaround. They technically technically, have not copyrighted that exact cake. So I could definitely give it a go. And so she said, perfect, exactly. And it'll look just like the cake in Minecraft, right? And I said, yep, I can do that. No problem, not, not an issue at all whatsoever. So she, uh, she placed the order and I made the cake. And I made it look exactly like it looked like it Minecraft. Frosting didn't quite reach all the way down the sides. Uh, had red squares on top. One of those red squares was shaped like a five, and there was a message in the center, happy birthday, whatever the kid's name was. I don't recall that. Again, this was years ago. My boss looked at it, and he looked at me, and he says, you're sure this is exactly what she wanted? And I said, yes, sir. This is exactly what she wanted. She was very specific. She wanted a cake that looks just like a cake in Minecraft. And my boss kind of shrugs and goes, okay, if you're sure, because this is kind of ugly. And I said to him, well, yeah, but it's how the cakes in Minecraft look. So what can you do? No, I did not take a picture of it. I should probably try to recreate it at some point. That would be a neat stream, wouldn't it? I can retell this story there and this time set it right. So, I was off the day she was supposed to come pick it up. But I didn't think anything was going to be an issue. It's exactly what she wanted. It was exactly what she asked for. Came in the work the day after. And my coworker looks at me. And the first thing he says is, Hey, Gata, that lady hated your cake. And everyone else in the bakery was like upset with him because they had all like together agreed they weren't going to mention it to me because they didn't want to break my heart. They were sweet like that. But that one coworker, he's like, no, he has to know. He has to know right away. This lady hated the cake. She forced the other baker who was on staff the day she came in to make a completely new cake from scratch. Turns out this woman had never even seen a cake in Minecraft. She had just assumed what it would look like, that it would have like, quote, Minecraft colors, which I don't really even know what those would be. Pure gray for the cobblestone and the logo maybe? I don't know, creeper green. She... So when she came in and saw this cake that was frost a little funny with these red squares on top, she absolutely hated it. 
Rad says, only in Florida. Uh, no, actually, uh, this was back when I was in Maine. I I'm certain this could happen in Florida, too. I mean, cake stories are bizarre, no matter where you are. Like... Everyone thinks that working as a baker in like a public bakery is just sprinkles and sugar, and sure, it is that, but it's also dealing with every single soccer mom who has ever had a kid ever, which is most of them. And that is no fun. No fun whatsoever. So, after that, we had to make an official rule, no more of that custom cake stuff. Like, we had made... Um, exceptions in the past for certain people that we knew personally, but from that point forward, it was, nah, no, we can't, we can't go through with this. Carol says, sprinkle sugar and drama. The, yes, the three most important ingredients to any bakery experience. Oh gosh, but there has been drama. Good Lord. This one mom came in with her soon-to-be seven-year-old daughter. And, um... This mom was like the visual epitome of a soccer mom. She had the, um, not Kim Kardashian. What's the other one? It starts with a K. Kate, the John and Kate plus eight. She had the Kate haircut. You know the one, the, the, the short hair, roundish, I guess. Um, but she came in, these, these, these super thick heels. I don't know how she was walking in them. Good Lord. Um, Designer jacket, super huge purse. I sound like I'm being very judgy right now, but what I'm trying to explain here is that she looked like the kind of customer who wanted to see your manager. Even from the other side of the store, I could tell that this was not going to be a fun interaction. She comes over with the kid in the cart, and they had this book that had all the designs in it. Carol says, I bet her name was Cindy. I would put money on that. I don't remember what her actual name was, but something along those lines. I would bet money on that. Um, they were looking through the book of all the different designs that we had, um, and they were trying to pick one out for this girl's seventh birthday party, which was apparently going to be that weekend. Um, at first, the mom was like, oh, honey, go on, pick out the one you want, while she was talking to me about pricing and sizes and whatnot. Um, oh, this batter is so good. Um, and eventually the daughter points one out. She goes, Mommy, I want this one. And the one that she had picked was, it was our generic boy cake. It was, how do I explain this? It had a monster truck on it, right? It had like a legit, like a Hot Wheels official, like monster truck that you could pick off the cake and play with later. And the cake was frosted to look like a, um, like a mud pit, I guess. Like, um, it had a green frosting to make it look like grass, to make it look like reeds going around. A big thing of chocolate in the center with like tire tracks coming out and the car on the other side. And of course there was space for a message because there's always a space for a message. Um, but she wanted the monster truck cake. The mom was not happy with this. She was not happy with this one bit. She flipped to another cake and she goes, oh, but honey, don't you want this one? This is the point where I knew for a fact that I was gonna be telling a story about this for years. I have severe issues with uh, gender roles and forcing them on children. Um, and working in a bakery where all the girls' cakes are pink and all the boys' cakes are blue, it, I, I rub up against this sort of thing. Like I used to rub up against it all the time. It was a recurring thing, but normally it was, it was like innocent. Like people would just make comments here or there, like they wouldn't really think about it. They'd have like a little teeny tiny tyke and they just said, oh, well, I want the blue one because, you know, he's a boy, obviously. And I just kind of like, mm, I, I guess. Like they didn't mean anything by it. But then we'd have people like that soccer mom who would be forcing it on their kid and in public and causing a major scene where there didn't need to be one. So this mom turns to the girl cakes and she says, oh, but honey, don't you want this one? And the cake she pointed out was perfectly fine. There wasn't anything wrong with the cake. I quite frankly adore the more frilly, pretty looking cakes. 
The cake she chose was our generic girl's birthday cake, which had butterflies on it. A bunch of different colored plastic butterflies. There were flowers on it, roses and vines, and the butterflies were like flitting in and out. Um, you could have any color flowers you wanted. The butterflies weren't like just pink. There was like yellow and blue, like a monarch butterfly one. They were very, very pretty. The only downside was that unlike that truck, those butterflies did not have any use outside of being cake decorations. There was a stud in the back of them to embed them in the cake. Um, so while you could technically take them and reuse them later, or like DIY it into like hair accessories or something, I'm reaching here, I really don't know what we would do with it. Um, it wasn't as versatile or as immediately fun as, say, the toy truck. Eat the butterflies, just Jun. No Jun, they're, they were plastic. They're not edible. They weren't fondant. I wish they were fondant. Um, but they were not. Give me one second to pop this into the oven, and I'll come back and finish the story. I promise. All right, let's see here. <laughs> Set the timer for 19 minutes. Carol says, everything is edible if you wish hard enough. No, Carol, you can eat anything if you try hard enough. You can't necessarily digest it with, with just raw effort. Human bodies don't work like that. Oh, but where was I? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm going to rinse off a few things and while I'm finishing the story. Um, and then we are going to do a little bit of testing with that scoop. Um, before the cakes come out and are ready to frost. Um, but yes, so the mother says, honey, wouldn't you rather have this cake? And the little girl, respectfully, mind you, she didn't demand it, said, no, mommy, I want the truck one. And the mother says, oh, you just want that because you want to impress your brothers. Because I guess this girl had two older brothers, which, I mean, I guess makes some sense. Generally, when there are boys in the house, the girls get introduced to rough and tumble stuff, where obviously in that household, if she hadn't had brothers, it would have just been Disney princesses up the wazoo. Mm -hmm. And a little girl adds, no, no, mom. I want the truck. I, I want that one. And the mom repeats, no, honey, you want the butterfly one, telling this kid what she wants. This kid is almost seven years old. And while that isn't necessarily all that old, it's old enough to know what you like and what you dislike. I, unfortunately, am paid by the hour and work for a corporation. I have to stand there, awkwardly holding the order sheet, watching this mom and kid go back and forth knowing that this is only going to end up in tears. Mostly probably going to be the little girl's, possibly mine. I don't know. This escalated back and forth. The kid, of course, doesn't get like loud or anything. She just keeps trying to establish, no, mommy, this is the one that I want. You said I could ask, I could get the one that I wanted, and this is the one that I want. This soccer mom, on her like five inch heels, gets down on her knees in front of her child in this crowded grocery store and starts to beg, please, darling, do this for mommy. What the fuck? Like, holy shit. It was so awkward and so out there. Like, who does that? Who begs their child like that in public? And uh, this kid obviously had to go through that stuff a lot because she took it like a champ. She just, like, she accepted it. She, like, she expected it of her mom. Like, good Lord. I wanted to, to be able to step in and say, lady, she wants the truck. Give her the fucking truck. But that, that wasn't my place. Unfortunately, eventually, the mother won out because she's the one who ordered the cake, obviously, and the girl's seven. And the little kid had to be carted away by the mom, not very happy. And honestly, the only solace I can give you from this story 
is the fact that I am 90% certain that by now, let's see, she would be, she'd be about 13 now at this point, I think, or turning 13. She's hitting her teenage years, all right? She is going to rebel so hard. And that mom's going to wonder, where did I go wrong? Well, I can start that list. I can start it right here. So that's, unfortunately, that's the only happy ending I can give you. But yeah, stuff like that all the time. It makes you lose your faith in humanity. Nothing will make you lose your faith in humanity faster than working with cakes. People are just so entitled. And they have such bizarre requests. Good lord. That's true, Jun. It did start with cake, so maybe the story isn't a total wash. All right. So, I'm going to rinse out this scoop real quick. Also, i got a question for you guys. How loud is the mixer? on your on your screens and whatnot. When I was watching back the last stream, it went a little louder than my voice, but it wasn't completely and totally unbearable. So I'm just wondering, to people who are watching it live, how how is it? So the general consensus is not that bad. So everyone was just making a big deal of it last time. I see how it is. I see how it is. Alrighty then. So, we've got 13 minutes on that cake. Alright, I am going to start with this one-fourth of a cup. I'm going to fill the scoop with water, and I'll pop it in, and we'll see if it fills it or goes over it. I wish I had a, a larger measuring implement that was actually marked, but unfortunately, no. It's on the list. It's on the list. Alrighty then. For science. Well, what do you know? It's literally maybe like a centimeter below exactly one-fourth of a cup. So I guess from now on, I'll just say one-fourth of a cup is shorthand so that people who don't have a fancy, fancy scoop uh, can follow from home. Although, I would still urge you to get a specific scoop for cupcakes instead of trying to eyeball it every single time. Well, that's just me. That's just me. Carol says, our jokes are made of love. Well, thank you. I love you guys too. And I really appreciate you guys coming out to support me. It's honestly really nice. Um, alrighty then. So, I guess while we're waiting, we do have a little more free time. I am going to slice up this line because we, we like I said we're coming back to this guy um, the final design I don't have the picture on me to show you but the final design had little lemon wedges um, uh, sticking out of each individual cupcake uh, not lemon wedges lime wedges specifically lime um, <laughs> my knives are out of arms reach this guy's big not this one. Here we go. Much better. And I have a cutting board. Neat. <laughs> Jen says he doesn't have a picture, so we can't tell if he really fucks it up. Yes, you have discovered my secret. I keep information from you so that if I do ruin something, I can just like blink and really quickly like recover like real fast. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, that's how uh, that's how you do that thing. And everything is great and dandy. <laughs> I totally meant to do this. All right, then. So let's see here. I guess I'll just start cutting. I guess I'll just get a sharper knife and then I'll start cutting. So I hate to break it to all of you, but Wrigley is sound asleep. I do not believe he'll be cameoing during this stream. Which is probably the saddest news that you have heard all day. I know that it's making me tear up a little. Um, however, 
I have another reason to be upset. And that is because, here we go, this is looking better. Um, without a Wrigley in the stream, I have no way of convincing my wife to watch it. Uh, night before last, I think it was, I told her, you know, the stream went great. She was asking me how it went, uh, because the night that she actually came back, uh, we had the little puppies to worry about. So we didn't really get to talk about how the stream went. I just told her it went great. I enjoyed myself and that's all she knew. Um, but she never actually wanted the details until a day or two ago um, where she asked me specifically, oh, how did it go? What happened? Who was there? And so I was telling her all the details and I told her, yeah, no, at one point, uh, Wrigley did a cameo. And she's like, my son? My son was on TV? And I'm like, well, maybe not TV, but you know, close enough. So she um, gets on her computer and she pulls up Twitch and she starts watching the stream. And originally I thought, oh, my wife is watching my stream. She's watching it. She's supporting me. This is sweet. This is so nice of her. She turns to me and she asks, so when does Wrigley show up? So we spent about 20 minutes, scrolling back and forth through the timeline, trying to pinpoint exactly when Wrigley showed up. Because he showed up, I want to say it was about 20 minutes in, and she did not want to watch the stream up until that point. She just wanted to see her son and call it good. Ow. I knew that was going to happen. Didn't cut myself, though. Let me do this way. Knife safety. Not one of my fortes. We need a hashtag Wrigley watch, says Jun. Um, maybe. Maybe. Uh-oh. Know what? I actually did cut myself because I am an absolute fool. It's not a deep one, though. It's just a surface one. That's embarrassing. Jokes on all those people who threaten me bodily harm. You can't hurt me because I'm already doing it to myself. I'm already being punished for having a Twitch stream. So there. Uh, but yes, we need a Wrigley watch. Maybe, only maybe. Sorry, Carol, I'll try to be more careful moving forward. All right, so let me cut these straight down the middle. All right, and we have little lime wedges. Aren't these cute? They're adorable. Brad says you can't hurt Gata if Gata hurts himself first. It's true. I mean, you can still hurt me emotionally, but everyone does that, so. No, Carol, I'm not going to bleed on the cupcakes. I promise. They will stop bleeding any second. Alrighty then. So, yep, we have all of our lime wedges. And I'm going to scoot these to the side, and the rest of these are going to go into my compost bin. Waste not, want not. We're the we're, we do the same thing with uh, the eggshells, actually. We dry them out in the sun and crush them up into a powder, and then we feed them back to our chickens so that they have the, um, the extra calcium in their diet. We're trying to make ourselves be fully self-sufficient, which is why we're growing our own vegetables and having our own eggs and all that. It's super neat. I don't know if I'd actually be able to like make enough flour and all that on my own farm, but one day I'd love to be able to use primarily my own ingredients in these cupcakes. Jun asks, chickens can eat the shells. Yes, actually. And it's quite healthy for them to get back because it's literally just pure calcium. And if you crush them down enough and add them to their food, they'll just be re-ingesting pure calcium. It might sound a little weird, considering that, you know, they're the ones who made the eggs in the first place, um, but it's no different than like when you get a bloody lip and you accidentally swallow some of your own blood. It's just your own blood, so it's like, mm -hmm. Probably shouldn't have mentioned blood while I'm actively bleeding. <laughs> All right, we have five more minutes on the cupcakes, and then we will, we will still have to make them um, cool for a bit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you guys how I set up a frosting bag. By doing the frosting first, even though it was a necessity, I've kind of completely thrown off 
any sense of uh, flow that I had with this. Like with last time, I'd be making the frosting right about now, but that had to go first, so I'm kind of floundering. Ooh. All right then. So, frosting bag. I skipped right through doing this with you guys last time, so I'm gonna show you step by step how to do it now. So, first thing we wanna do is choose our tip. Last time, I believe it was this one. This was the tip that I used for, come on, focus. Focus camera, there we go. This was the tip that I used for the ice cream cone cupcakes. It is the Wilton 1M. I am unsure what that actually means. All of these have funky numbers and I don't know what they actually line up to. If they line up to a size or like when the tip was released, I'm not sure because some of it feels pretty darn random. Um, this time, however, I'm going to be using a Wilton 2A, which I refer to as a bubble tip. I tend to refer to any open mouth tips as a bubble tip because I use them for my well, my bubbles, I guess. Um, one of the borders that I do, I, we're specifically calling it a bubble, a bubble border. So that three times fast. So I just naturally refer to all of mouth tips as a bubble, what have you, which makes for a fun time for anyone who isn't me trying to do this sort of thing. R says, I can take a peek at Wilton meanings when I get back to the party store. Everyone is surprisingly into things like that. I would appreciate that. It's something that I could probably research myself very, very easily. Um, but I do, my, I do my baking by sight, mostly. I, I, I don't even have names for half of my tools. I just know the, the scoopy, drifty thing versus the scrapey, uh, stabby thing, you know? It's only really an issue when I have someone helping me in the kitchen and I have to ask for something. Although I guess if I'm gonna be doing this like tutorial series thing, I probably should know the actual words for things, huh? So anyway, uh, so I put the tip in the bag um, and you wanna make sure you push it all the way down to as far as it'll go. Don't push it any further than it, ha than it will normally go because that will end up stretching the plastic. And if this plastic gets stretched anywhere, when you fill it with frosting and put pressure onto that, where that plastic was stretched is where it's going to burst. It's gonna be the weak point and you don't wanna do that. What you do wanna do, however, is, let me put it up to the camera a bit better. So you locate the tip approximately where the frosting, this is probably shown better with one of these tips, how we have, it goes up and down. There are like divots in it. You want to grab the tip below those divots. You do not want the plastic to be going up and over it because if the plastic covers any of the divots, then it, oh, oh, look who it is, everyone. We have a celebrity appearance right after I said he wouldn't be showing up. Rickley, would you like to come say hello to everyone? I think he would. Ugh. And let me grab the camera. Hey everyone, it's Wrigley. Hello, boy. Oh, his little tail's wagging. He has no idea what's going on right now. Hey, you here for a drink of water? Do you have a good nap? Mwah. All right, let me put you down. Ah, there you go, boy. Good pupper. Oh, what a good boy you are. Yes, I love you too. All right, let me get back to work. Oh. I did kiss him. I did give him a big old smooch. All right. Jessica got after me about this from the last stream. I didn't wash my hands after holding the dog and that's not very sanitary. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So my wife doesn't yell at me again. Gotta, she says. You're streaming to a bunch of impressionable people who don't know what they're doing when it comes to cakes. You don't wanna teach them bad habits like not washing your hands. Spoon says, filthy dog cupcakes in all caps. Yes. Yes, yes, I know. I'm horrible. I'm the worst. I'm the absolute worst. <laughs> Jen says, everyone says cat or dog hair is the best ingredient though. It adds, it adds love. I find it adds character. Now, of course, there is too much of a good thing. Like that's, uh, you can have too much dog hair. Um, anyway, I was showing you guys tip stuff. Yes, we'll get back to that. So 
once you have the tip in the bag, you want to make sure you grab, you pinch right below where the tines are. Um, because when you cut the plastic, you don't want the plastic to go up and over any of this because that will alter the shape of your Frosty when it comes out. So, since this is an open mouth and it's like a flat top, that's not so much of an issue for me. I just got to grab and pinch anywhere below. Um, you don't want to pinch right by the base of the tip though um, because again, the, it'll create a weak point. And if you squeeze it too hard, the plastic that's holding it, what little plastic there will be. I just keep getting interrupted here. Let me pull the cupcakes out one second. interesting. Let me turn the oven off and I'll come grab you guys and then we can go and look and see how these turned out. Hello again. So these did not puff up near as much as I would like. I normally prefer a cupcake that is rounded on the top and high enough that it breaches the papers. Um, these did not do that. And I'm unsure exactly why. Uh, it might just be the acidity of the juices we added. It might be uh, because we did replace, we, well, not really replace, but we did use water instead of milk. Maybe we could have circumvented that if we had added milk. I do not know. Um, but they do look good. Um, they look edible and they'll probably taste perfectly fine. So. I think I can get over them not looking absolutely perfect. But next time, if I do try these again in the near future, I'm going to have to fiddle around with the ingredients a bit to try to get them to... <laughs> Z-Man is screaming, ruined, ruined! Yes, they are an abomination. This will not stand. I, I have to hang my apron up. I have to quit. Coop Cakes is over, guys. I've made one unperfect batch of cupcakes, and that's it. That I had a good run. I had a good run. Um, but no, in all seriousness, they're probably going to taste fine, which really is like what you should always say with cupcakes. They're cupcakes. As long as they're edible, even if they look a little wonky, everyone's going to love them. So when you have a mistake, never feel bad. As long as they're edible, if they come out completely inedible, then you've done something horribly wrong and should be ashamed. Frosting tips. I forget where I was. Yes, for the third time, pinch below the opening. And then making sure you have that pinched properly, poke the tip down. It doesn't have to be all the way out, it just needs to be down. And make sure you're still pinching. This is where we want to cut. So, we grab ourselves a pair of scissors, which I know for a fact, here they are, they were hiding behind the, um, the beater, the mixer, um, and we cut. Try to cut across evenly, um, so that way there isn't a disparity in how the plastic hugs the tip, and then you just push the tip all the way back up. Don't, now don't pull on it too much, because again, you'll create a weakness and that's not a good thing, but there we go, we have the tip. Now, this is for cupcake tips. There's a difference between cupcake tips and decorating tips. And let me grab those real quick. I wish I'd had those on hand again, but I can show you the difference. And it's really neat. It's like really, really, really neat. All right. So this big boy, this big boy is my official Wilton carrying case. I managed to get this on sale at Walmart for like 10 bucks and these normally go for like 30 something. So I was really, really, really happy with this. There's like two different layers to it and it has the whole carrying. I'll show you in a second. I sound like a kid on Christmas because this is one of the coolest toys that I own and it was cheap. It was cheap. My adult sensibilities are not um, damaged by this purchase. Take the tip over 
there. So actually, yeah, like right in the top, you can see all of these little circles here. This is so that all of the individual tips will like go up and be held in place by it, which is super nice. Instead of having them just jangling around free. All right, then. So um, there are three kinds of tips. There are the cupcake tips. There are regular decorating tips, which are much smaller. And then there are, is the base frosting tip, which is this big boy right here. This is the one that I would use if I were to be frosting a regular size cake, um, but preferably I would have a large reusable bag instead of these small plastic throwaway black bags, unfortunately. Um, let's see here. But I'm gonna grab another frosting bag and show you how I do decorating tips. Um, unlike cupcake tips, unlike cupcakes and regular cakes when you're base frosting it, when you're decorating, you generally have more than one color going. And if you only have one of each tip, but you need to use that tip in more than one color, it is an issue. Like you can't remove a tip from a bag until the frosting is all gone. But you know, if you're doing something really, really specific, really detailed, you can't just keep throwing out and making new bags over and over and over again. And that's why we have this baby. This is called a coupler. It's a little plastic tip. Doesn't really do much. There's a little divot. I don't know if the camera will let me show you. A little divot right here, which makes it really hard to properly frost with because all the frosting will skirt out that one side. But then we have this um, nut of sorts, this plastic nut, which goes on top of it and screws into place. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put the coupler base in the frosting bag, just like that last tip. We're going to put it all the way down to the bottom. We are going to pinch. This has little um, uh, little grooves for the screwy bit. But yes, Carol, nut. I said nut. We are all adults here. I don't understand why you're like this. But yes, we cut across the bag so that the coupler sits right here. All right. Then we take our tip of choice. I'm gonna choose my uh, 12 tip, which is another one of those bubble tips, one of the open mouthed ones. And I'm going to plonk it right on top. Then we just take the little screwy bit, the nut. The nut, yes, you screw it on top. So now the tip is firmly in place. I can decorate with this frosting that's in this bag, the imaginary frosting. And let's say I wanted this tip because I want to do the border. Let's say this is a nice blue. All right. I used the blue for the border around the bottom, the border around the top, but they also wanted the message in blue. They wanted to say, happy birthday, Jason, I guess. Let's just call them Jason for now. Happy birthday, Jason. They want it in the same blue that they ordered for the base uh, borders along the side. Well, I have the blue in this the imaginary blue in this bag, but I don't want to use this tip. This is way too big a tip for writing. I could, but it wouldn't look good. I want something smaller for that. So all I got to do is unscrew here, take off the tip, choose my next tip, which I'm going to use this, what number is this? A number three writing tip, which is another open mouth tip, but as you can see is so much smaller at the end. This will call, cause very thin, very tiny lines, which is perfect for recreating handwriting and frosting. One of these days, I'm just going to have a frosting stream where I just write a bunch of letters in different colored frosting and just mess around with it and show you much different techniques. That'll be a different stream, not today. Um, but yes, I screw that on and suddenly this big bag of imaginary blue frosting is for handwriting. Ta-da! Alternatively, if I only had one of each tip, but I needed to use that tip with multiple colors, same normal premise, I just rinse this out real quick and then screw it onto another bag of say red frosting that I have prepared. And there you go, problem solved. It's super duper neat. I love it. When I first was introduced to it, when I was first being trained, it absolutely blew my mind away. I was thrilled. It was so cool.
All right, I'm gonna save this bag because there isn't anything wrong with it. It has a coupler in it already. So I'm just going to keep it in here and I'll use it next time. Let's see here. Cool. These are still a little warm, so I gotta stall for maybe two, three more minutes. Eh, what else can I show you guys while I'm here? This thing is so neat though. This, I can show you real quick. It's the same general idea as the holes in the uh, lid, of that, the lid of this thing, where they have the individual holes and then little stands inside. This is for dishwashing your tips. So you don't have them just clanking around in your washing machine, or if they're too small for you to properly get in there and get the frosting out. You just pop this thing open, set your tips in it, put this thing on top, set it in your washing machine, your dishwasher, and um, let it go for a spin. It's so neat. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me because I like cake so much, but these neat little doodads are just the absolute coolest. And nothing in here that I can really show you right off. I have some fondant stuff in there. I, I haven't experimented with fondant yet. It's one of the things that people get after me about because everyone assumes that fondant is like one of the first things you learn because everyone's seen Cake Boss. And bless Cake Boss, he makes amazing cakes, but most of it's for show. So there's a lot of Rice Krispie treats, there's a lot of fondant, there's a lot of just decorating stuff that doesn't necessarily taste good. But their cakes are so big that they can be excused. And it's a TV show, so like the spectacle is kind of the point. Um, but no, fondant is something that I still haven't gotten into, mostly because getting actual fondant is a big investment. Um, not a big, big investment. Um, but Jun's yelling at me, hey, I like Rice Krispie Treats. There's nothing wrong with Rice Krispie Treats. And using Rice Krispie Treats to like alter the shape of your cake when regular cake would just break and fall apart is genius. Absolute genius. I love it. But some of the cakes are like 50% Rice Krispie Treat. And at that point, can it really be called a cake? You know? It's, it's less, it's, I, I personally find it less interesting if they say oh yeah i'm making a cake i'm gonna make like a shark out of cake but the only cake is like the lower jaw because of gravity it's less impressive i guess it's kind of like how when people tell to ask me oh you make cakes i go yeah i make cakes and they ask me do you make them from scratch and i say no i start from a box mix and they easily go oh oh they're instantly just like oh that's that's not as impressive that's not that's not as cool which whatever. It's a shortcut that makes sense for the industry and what they're trying to do, but in terms of like how impressive it actually is, eh. Carol says, that's almost philosophical. I could probably like tweak that a bit and turn it into like a Tumblr post and get it viral, you know? I could get it stolen and put in a book at some point if I, if I workshop that just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I'll think about it. Um... But yeah, no, at some point on stream, I want to get into fondant. There's a marshmallow based fondant where it is powdered sugar, uh, melted marshmallows, and then of course the coloring of your choice. And you just gotta like knead it and make sure it's the proper consistency. Then you roll it up and cool it. And then you just have like this, this fondant putty that you can make into all sorts of things, which will be really nice to get into. Um, all the fondant that we used back at the bakery that I worked for was pre-made. So all of the bows, all of the, we had the little fondant polka dots. So we'd have a cake, and then we'd just have these little colored polka dots of different sizes, like little flat discs, and we'd just take them and we'd set them in, and then with the, um, because of how the frosting was, you know, kind of a liquid, um, it would like melt the fondant slightly, so it like would fuse into the frosting and look as though we'd like printed it on. It was so cool. I would really love to get into that. I would really love to try that with you guys, so you can all see when I fail horribly. All right. So with that out of the way, um, I, these are about cool enough. That's all right. I am going to grab the frosting out of the fridge. I'm going to grab the packaging for these cupcakes and then I'll set those all up and I'll be right back. Okay. Just making sure my phone was still working right. Here. 
and I am running out of space real quick. Let me put some of this stuff away so it's not... My knives. Can you guys still hear me well when the mic isn't like right next to my throat? Or is it like a, a noticeable drop? It's a cheap-ish um, clip mic. Does the job okay, but due to my technology situation, it isn't the greatest, unfortunately. Um, I've mentioned this like twice this stream alone, but I am planning on investing in a wireless box um, that will allow me to walk around and not have to constantly unplug the mic and um, also mute it when need be, which will be nice. Alrighty then. So I'm gonna move the limes out of the way and get the frosting over here. So here's the packaging that, packaging that I use. Um, I prefer to go with the six cup tall dome uh, because honestly, uh, people only ever want a full dozen of cupcakes if they're like getting them for like a uh, like a party or something like a bulk party. When people just pick up random cupcakes because they feel like it, they usually get a smaller pack of say six. And I get the tall dome because that gives me more space to work with when I'm decorating. I don't have to worry so much about the cupcakes hitting the top of the dome and then getting smushed. It's kind of uh, disappointing when you decorate your cupcake all nice and pretty and you, you close the lid and it all just kind of smushes along the lid. Like that's, that's no fun. I guess I'll only do the one dozen. I need a bigger workspace than this, good lord. All right, let's pull these guys out. So let me hear a little bit of feedback from you guys. You've watched two streams now. I recognize everybody in the chat currently. What, um, does this work for you? You guys watching me like start from the very beginning and then bake and then cool, like the whole thing? Or would you rather I went with more of like a proper cooking show approach where I have stuff prepared ahead of time and you just watch the decorating fun bits? Vote now on your phones. Because I've been thinking about it and like the, um, the mixer issue isn't as big of an issue as I guess everyone was making it out to be. Thanks guys. Um, but still, you know, I'm still, I'm still working on figuring out what my actual flow for this is going to be. I don't know if shorter streams would be ideal to you guys. Jun says, no, I like the whole process. Ours says, I'm all right with waiting for the whole process. It's a lot of fun to chat. All right, that's pretty positive. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'm, st I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. At some point though, y'all will have watched so many of these that you'll know everything except for the last like two seconds of what I do. So I guess I gotta up my game I was thinking of maybe trying to get some music playing. I don't know how I'd actually do that because I am working from Twitch Mobile, which isn't as powerful as like the desktop. But we'll see. We'll see. Alrighty then. So time to get the frosting into the bag. Um, and I gave you guys a quick rundown last time. Get the bag like this, cup your fingers, get them up there and support this rim. Yeah, nothing to, um, I don't want to do anything that's like licensed. I want some like generic soothing, like acoustic guitar music going on in the back, something relaxing, something nice, um, or maybe something peppier, something bouncier. I'm unsure. Cause like on the one hand, my personal aesthetic is very much like pastel, but like the whole, my name is Gata thing has been and always will be based around like kitschy farm stuff. 
So I don't know if I want to go like full country boy with this or if I want to stick with more like pop. If that makes any sense. So I don't know. I'll probably do a test stream with the different, different, different genres in it and then see what you guys think. Because like, as, um, as it's kind of embarrassing to say it in words, um, but I am kind of trying to make this be like a thing. Maybe not necessarily like a super duper popular thing, but I am trying to make My Name is Gata like a recognizable brand, I guess. It sounds so, it sounds so cringy when I put it into words. I'm not trying to be like a multimedia mogul here, but like it's always been my dream to like have a YouTube channel to make videos and produce content. I want to be a content producer. Maybe not full time because I, I couldn't afford that. So I don't really know what my brand really is because part of it, I can plan a brand out, you know, all I can, I can spend hours planning what my brand is going to be, but I'm the main star here. I'm, I'm the guy who like makes it what it is. And I, because I am not a third person watching me, I can't really gauge what I am. I see me as I view me. I don't see me as you guys watching at home view me. If that makes any sense. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. Anyway, enough of that. We finally got the frosting into the bag. Um, and you remember my spiel about air bubbles and all that last time. I don't think I have too many in this. Whipped frosting tends to move into the space better than buttercream. Because again, like I said last time, buttercream, the whole point of it is that it's, it holds its shape. Um, whereas whipped frosting is just meant to be lighter than buttercream. Um, and unfortunately, the only way it holds its shape is if you keep it cold which is the biggest downside of these. This has to be cold and kept cold and it has to be in containers because this is a raw, raw dairy. It's just heavy cream flavoring and sugar. So um, let's see here. I think I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time. I'm gonna pull the camera down um, and I'll show you frosting one cupcake and then I'll move the camera back up and we'll do the rest of these just real quick. There isn't any technique to this, but since last time I showed you how I do cupcakes when I want there to be height, I'll try to show you when I don't. All right, so let's pull, scoot you back. That's a good spot. I think this would be a good spot. All right then, try to get this out of the way a little bit. All right then. So uh, it's the exact same premise as the um, ice cream cone cupcakes, where you want to start from the side and as you rotate, move in slowly. Um, but unlike those cupcakes, I don't want to build it up too much. I don't want this to be a peak. I want this to be maybe not flat. I want it to have like some dimension to it, but I don't want it to just keep piling up and up and up on itself until we have like a drill going on here. I don't want that. Um, because when you bite into a cupcake, like this bit right here is already using the majority of like your mouth. Like you, people generally only have so much capacity so they can only open their mouth so wide. If your frosting like goes all the way up and like till it's like inserted into their nose, that isn't necessarily a good cupcake experience, at least not in my personal opinion. So here we go. All right. And there we are. Ba-da! Got a cute little swirl. I pressed down a little too much on this side. I was trying to keep it up high enough that um, this lip on the frosting, come on, focus camera, that the lip um, wouldn't end up scraping the frosting. Jun asks, it's not green, is it still lime? I gave it a little taste. It's not as strong as I would have expected considering um, the um, the lime juice that we did add, um, but it does still taste like lime. The good news is that um, um, because the whole point of having whipped cream is that we want the frosting to be lighter and I get moister. 
I, that sounds like a, a, a bad word to use. Um, we, we, the whole point of having frosting is that it moistens the cupcake. This is what frostings tend to be on cakes that are normally known to be dry um, to kind of balance it out some. Um, we want to be able to really taste the lime flavor of the cupcake so the frosting cannot be flavored too heavily or people will only ever taste that and they won't really notice the flavor of the cake. So I am going to put the camera back. I could have colored it. I do have the coloring for that. Um, but I did not know what color the cake itself would have turned out. And it would have looked kind of weird to have a really like a visibly green cake, uh, I'm sorry, a visibly green um, frosting on a just a regular colored cake. People wouldn't look at it and think lime. They'll think, oh, this is a frosting that's been colored green to make it look pretty. I am planning on doing actually um, this Saturday because I want to get back on my Saturday streaming schedule. I am going to be making a cake which involves a decent amount of dye. So if you come back then, I will have a whole bunch of stuff about dyeing and color theory and all that to talk to you about. This is not that stream though. No, Carol, it's not going to be a Minecraft cupcake. No, no, no. All right, so I am going to um, frost the rest of these real quick. <laughs> I'm trying to focus here, so I'm not saying much. Alrighty then. Um, how much frost do I have left in this? I'll just empty out the bag because I want to get all of these into the fridge as soon as possible. Otherwise, the frosting will start to melt. And unlike, say, buttercream, where if it melts a bit and you get it cold, it'll seize back up, whipped cream does not do that. Once it melts, it'll stay in whatever state it was, melted, it'll just get colder. So it'll, it, won't, it won't melt more, I guess is what I'm getting at. Okay, um, I'm gonna fill that up in a second, but before we do that, we have some decoration. We have the limes. Now, let's see here. How do I wanna stick these in? I could do them like this, or I could put them at an angle. I think I'm gonna put them at an angle. I'm gonna want to embed them decently down into the frosting so that they hold. Another thing that I think I mentioned briefly last stream was uniformity in cupcakes. Since my end goal, oh, my beautiful wife is home. Everyone say hello to the beautiful wife. Who are you talking to? Let's see, we have a bunch of people on stream today. Jun's here, Carol's here. Show them the puppies? I mean, not right now. I have food out on the counter. But before we end the stream, Wrigley already cameoed. So I'm always, I'll have to watch the video later. Yeah, see? What, I was, like, what was I telling you guys? She only watches the stream because the dog's there. I see how it is. Hey. All right, well. Give me um, a smooch. Love baby's you. Baby's already ate. Oh, good. So, Wrigley has no water. Sorry, right, that's my fault. Stream should be ending in about 15 minutes, all right? Can you? Can I eat one? After the stream? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna how about try. this? When I take a bite, I'll call you. And hello, you beautiful wife! Yes, I, to I, I told them to say hello, beautiful wife. Uh. <laughs> All right, go on. I love you. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> this is only the second time that's happened. Just a second. Just a second, surprisingly. We haven't, we haven't um, beaten that. that. That was the uh, high score from last time, too. Everyone's laughing at us. Where did I put my backpack? I didn't see you come in with it. No, luckily it did not go into the cupcake, so this one is a little askew. Alrighty then. Yeah, she's left. I'll call her back when it's time to taste test these, because I'll have one without the frosting, she'll have one with the frosting, and then she'll tell me what it is, or what she feels about it. 
Sound good? Sound good. So, uh, yes, uniformity in cupcakes. Um, when you are making cupcakes just for you and yours, um, if they don't look identical, that's fine. They're cupcakes, they're meant to be eaten. When you are trying to sell them as a product, doing your best to make sure that each individual cupcake looks as similar to every other cupcake in the batch is really, really important. Um, some people say that it makes it look like a, a machine made it, but for some people, you know, we have gotten so used to seeing mass-produced products as being superior to handmade ones and that you know exactly what you're getting, that sometimes seeing a product that looks like it was made the exact same way over and over and over again will convince you to actually buy that product. So, even though I could not get all of these limes cut the exact same width, when I put them into the cupcakes, I try to make sure they were sitting at the exact same angle, aimed at the exact same angle, and put in the same part of the cupcake so that they look nice and organized. And honestly, I'm quite happy with how these came out. These look really nice, in my opinion. Maybe that's just me. All right, so that's that. Um, I am going to real quick put uh, more frosting and, and the limes on these and get these in the fridge so they do not start melting on me. Um, beyond the fact that these are whipped cream frosting. Um, whipped cream? Yes, whipped cream. That's what the recipe called for. Don't make that face. She was hoping for buttercream. Carol asks, but can you eat the lime? I don't see why you couldn't. I myself am, I myself am not a big fan of uh, raw lime. Um, that's just me. If you happen to like, like uh, raw lime, by all means, there's no reason why you couldn't. And honestly, the whole point of having the whipped frosting, as I mentioned earlier, is that it's refreshing. That's what I was looking for. Um, it's refreshing. Um, so I don't see why eating the whoops, eating the, the lime would not be an integral part of the experience of these key lime cupcakes. Jun says, take a bite of lime and chase it with cupcake or vice versa. Yes. Treat it like a tequila shot. I say as though I've ever had a tequila shot. I think limes are involved. Jun asks, are you worried that the frosting is going to melt in the bowl at all? The bowl was also in the fridge, so it's still pretty cold. So it should be fine. I'm working pretty quickly, so I shouldn't be an, it shouldn't be an issue. If this were a larger thing, if I were to say have 48 cupcakes or even more and I had like a big batch of frosting, I probably would pre-make these bags individually and have them sitting in the fridge. So when one bag empties, I would pull it out, save the tip and make a new one. Yes, the bowl should keep the contents cool. The big issue, the big issue is that with my um, circulation, my hands get warm really quickly. So any frosting that I'm holding in a bag in my hands, I'm gonna be melting it just by holding it. So I have to work relatively quickly when it comes to whipped. When I worked in the bakery and we had to work with whipped frosting, um, of course, all of our frosting there came in bags pre-made. Um, so all I had to do was screw on a tip and just go for it. But I would have the issue where it would get to a point where the, the frosting wasn't holding its shape because I was holding it for so long. So I would have to time it um, so I was only holding a bag for a certain amount of time. Then I'd have to take that bag back into the cooler to let it sit and get stiff again. And I'd grab the next bag and I'd have to work like that. And it wasn't, it wasn't easy, it wasn't fun. Um, but it prevented us from having melty messes all over our cakes. There's nothing worse than being in the middle of decorating a cake. You're writing the name, happy birthday, Jason, and you reach the pocket in the bag where it's just melted, where like it was all cold near the, near the, the, where did I put the, the frosting bag? Yeah. It was all cold right around here, but you were holding it up here. So all of this is meltier. And when all of that finally goes away and you, you, you're like just writing the last letter, the N on Jason, you're seconds away from finishing this cake. And then all that melted mess just splurts out all over. Oh, it's the worst. 
it's so bad. It's so bad. And fixing it isn't fun either. Getting melted frosting off of a cake is no, is no walk in the park. Gosh. Ugh, just thinking about it, I'm cringing. First world cake problems, I guess. Let's get these in here. <laughs> now, I want to be able to eat these. So I'm going to take this six here and I'm going to set them aside unfrosted. Frost these. Oh, I almost had enough to finish these last three. Let me fill these up real quick like. And we have just about hit the exact point in last week's stream where we called it a night. So these things take about two hours, I guess. It didn't help this time, I guess, that I did the frosting first instead of in between. I'm trying to time it. I'm trying to find a, a good flow. What do you think, guys? Two hours too much? Too little? Like, granted, of course, it has to end when the project ends. That's, that's just how it goes. But I worry that this goes on for a bit too long. For gaming and whatnot, you could go three or four hours, people coming in and out, and nobody complains. But for something like this, I still, I still don't have my, uh, my thumb on the pulse of uh, this particular medium. Alrighty then. So there's that. I'm going to pop the rest of this um, frosting back into the fridge because I do have some more batter, but I'll be doing that after the stream. I'm not going to make you guys sit through all that. Um, so give me just one second. Carol says, it's fun to hear your cupcake stories. Well, I'm glad you like them. I really am glad you like them. Um, let me pop this one back open. Because I want to get these limes in here. I don't think I have enough. I don't think I cut enough to finish more than one box, though. Yeah, that's kind of a downside of that lime. So, that's good to know. I don't think I want to cut these any slimmer than they already are. Um, maybe near the ends. I mean, you know, I need to not cut myself. That might help some. But these are these are pretty slim as it is. And sure, they're just decoration. But if I went any slimmer, I run the risk of completely like losing a side. And I want them to keep the the shape they have, like because. The, the, I zested the side of these, but this is the size going to be embedded in the cupcake, so it won't be visible, so that's fine. Boop -ba -doop -boop -boo. Yeah, no, the friend that I'm trading this with um, is the friend who actually raised our brand new baby chicks. I don't know if you guys saw on Twitter today, but we have two new chicks on, on the farm. Um... Their names are Segi, named after Sagata Sanshiro, which was a, uh, a mascot for the Sega Dreamcast in Japan, played by the same actor as the original Kamen Rider. It's a nerd reference. I have a lot of those. The other chick is named Pepsi Man, after our Lord and Savior, the hero we all need but not the one we deserve, Pepsi Man. My wife uh, does not like these names and has responded to them with got a why whenever I bring them up. Rad says there better be a Kylo hen at some point. Yes! That was my wife screaming yes from the other room. Um, yes, at some point. Uh, the next chick we get is, it's her turn to name it. 
She gets to name the next one. Um, she, get, she got to name the first four birds. So I got to name the next four birds, which ended up being uh, Goat, uh, Ken Shiro, now Seggy and Pepsi Man. Um, so the next bird, we're going to go back and forth between the two of us. She'll get to name one, I'll name the next, so on and so forth. Uh, so at some point, yes, Kylo Hen is definitely in the cards. Definitely think that's a good idea. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, poor goat. She didn't make it. It's a, it's a shame, but, you know, it's farm life. It's how it happens. Um, beautiful. The stream is kind of winding down. Would you be able to come out here for a second? Um, yeah, let me put the clothes on. <laughs> okay. I think I can hold them at bay for a few more minutes. Okay. All right. Let me, um, you know what? I'm just going to leave these out for the time being. Because she'll want to pick her pick. Hmm. Now what? I'm going to put the ones with the lines on them into the fridge real quick. One second. And all of the cake work is done, so I'm gonna pull this up so you guys can see me. Hello! It's the guy who's been waving his hands at you dramatically for the past two hours. Um, while we wait for Jessica, because she's gonna want to taste test these with me, and then we are going to show you the puppies, the little uh, bottle feeders that we have that we've been taking care of. Um, yes, hello, it is the guy, it is me, hello. Um, Henlo. Yes, thank you, Carol. Henlo. A chicken bun. It has to be a chicken bun. Um, what was I saying? Yes. We'll taste test, show you the puppies, and we'll sign off. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to mention what I am doing this Saturday. Um, because this Saturday I am going to be doing another Coop Cakes Live. I want to try to get it onto the, um, every Saturday thing. Um, and I want to be able to stick to that. I want to be able to, to do that and have this be a recurring thing. Um, and hopefully maybe get some new people in here. I don't know. Um, it'd be nice if I could. Like, I love you guys. Don't get me wrong. But I would not mind having a larger audience um, before. Ooh, June, you're right. It will be Cinco de Mayo. I don't I have. make some, like, um, what is it oh. called? The spicy hot chocolate. The wife, everyone. Let me, you're short. Let me put this down just a little bit. Of course I'm short. <laughs> Hello. Nah. All right, then. Um, yes, what was I was saying. Um, we're going to do things a little differently next time, though. Um, instead of streaming exactly Hello, at 5. Hello, who is that? Uh, that is Rad. Hello. Yes, Rad said, hello, beautiful wife. Carol! I love you. You know that? I love you. You big nerd. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you, I love how everyone's calling me beautiful wife. You are my beautiful wife. That's how I Confidence refer to you. Confidence boost. Jen says, I see Jess has a Yuri on ice shirt. Yeah, yes! sh show off the shirt. <laughs> I'm short. <laughs> it's a wonderful shirt. I love it. I wish I had one. Of course I know you. Yes, of course she knows you, Carol. We talk about you a lot. You're the reason these streams exist. Um, but to finish my thought before we get into taste testing, um, we're going to do things a little different next week. Um, I actually am going to have mm -hmm. something special for you guys uh, to premiere before the stream. I'm not sure how long that will be, if it'll be a 10 or 15 minute thing, but we will have a uh, Twitch premiere where we all sit with, you know, with me in the chat with you guys and you wrong. watch a, that's batter beautiful. The frosting's in the fridge. It's key lime. Ooh, that's good. Isn't it though? Oh yes, puppies. We'll get to that after the taste test. Because oh. I want to move the food off the counter before we bring the dirty puppies over. Oh, yeah. They started their first course of dewormer today. Oh, they did. Good. Well, good. They're getting big, guys. Uh, Marcy, her eye opened today. Yeah, one eye it? open. And one then Seymour's eye. working on opening one of his eyes, Just the too. one eye. And they're all, every single puppy's over a pound now. Good. Good. Um, Marcy's just barely. She's at like 1.01. 1. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I love these dogs. They're so cute. Um, but yes, we'll have a Twitch premiere of something special for you guys. 
which I hope becomes a regular thing. And then once that's done, then the actual stream will start. I don't know if that will change how long the stream runs. I would like to not go past 7.30 because I have a bedtime. <laughs> um, I, I need sleep. I need a lot of sleep. Um, but hopefully you guys can make it. Um, hopefully Saturday's a better time. We didn't have as many people in chat today, but it's a Monday, so I, I expected that. But um, thank you guys for coming out. Now, before we go, Cup beautiful. Cake, cupcake, cupcake. Yes. Um, I'm going to have one of these um, non-frosted ones because as it is whipped, it will kill me if I have more than a, a lick. I had a lick earlier and it almost did me in. I almost died on stream, guys. You almost watched my, my death. So we're going to bite into that at the same time. All right? Oh, okay. Yep. Let's come, come to the camera Why a little bit. Small? I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> bedtime on Saturday? I'm an old man, okay? Yeah, we usually go to bed around 8. Can't stay up past 9. We're both Also, I'm exhausted. awake before the sun most days. I have farming stuff to do. Can, give me a break. <laughs> All righty then. Ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Be nice and tart. Very tart. A good tart. Not too tart. I love him. I'm glad. But I, I'm not a fan of whipped, so. Nah, no, I know you wouldn't be. But no, the 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 lime flavor does really pop. It pops a lot better than the frosting did. Um, the lemon in there, because I know that it's in there, I can taste it. But if I didn't know lemon was in there, um, I would just think it's particularly potent lime, um, which is good, which is really good. That was the point. Um, the only downside is, of course, the fact that it didn't puff yeah, quite right. Didn't it? The consistency, well, let well, I me mean, explain that in the stream before. I had to use water instead of milk. You um, couldn't use the almond milk? I don't have almond milk. Um, no, I didn't want to. This is just the first run. It's a, t it's a test. I didn't want to. I didn't want to move away from the recipe too much. Mm. Um, so consistency um, is not as poofy as I would like. It's pretty dense. It's not crumbling. It's not crumbly, which is good, but it is a little dry, um, which does make sense. I don't know if that's because of the lime juice itself or because we use water and not milk. But um, if I were physically capable of eating it, um, I would definitely want this with the whipped cream because that I feel would balance out and make it a bit better. Um, I'm probably going to have to make myself some buttercream at some point to put on this because I do not want to finish eating this. It's a little oh, too will. dry. Oh, well, there you go. There we go. Waste not, want not. So, beautiful. <laughs> if you would not mind um, getting the poopies so we can show them off on stream real quick. Mm -hmm. And then after we have uh, oogled them a little bit, um, I will sign off and uh, we'll see you next week. So we have two poopies. They're from the same litter. Uh, the boy is Seymour. And the girl is Marcy. They are uh, a mix of a little bit of everything. Um, they are primarily dachshund mix, though. So they are long. But, hello. They yeah. turn two weeks tomorrow. And they, are and they will be up for adoption. Well, no one in this chat is local, so it won't really help. They'll get adopted through your, your vet clinic pretty easily. So, mm -hmm. yes. So just Little to, sausages, yes. Little tiny sausages. What I love about Seymour is that his markings, he looks kind of like a Roddy, but he's very obviously not going to be as big as a Roddy. He's a dachshund mix. He's going to be a little teeny tiny guy. She hunger. Oh, is she going for your finger? Yeah, though they did eat not too long ago. Yeah, they are sniffly. They're looking for a nipple. They, they, they really want to eat. Normally when we take them out, it's to feed them. So they're like, I know what's going on. They don't know what's going You're on. You're going to bake them. No, I'm not going to bake them. Also, hello, Pentagon Warrior. I did not see you pop up. Thank you for joining us. Unfortunately, we're about to shut down for the night. Um, these are just kind of like the last minute surprise. He's licking in between my fingers. Good Lord. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, so I guess, I guess that's it. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, I will see you this Saturday with another round. Um, Her eyes open. And, oh, is it open? This one, well, it was a second ago. Oh, she's closed because she's focused on food. We'll show you these guys again when they're a little bit bigger, I promise. What? Pen <laughs> Pentagon the Warrior says, oh, I thought it was a dog cooking stream. No, no, it's not. That's not, that's not what we do.
we do not cook these precious babies. Alrighty then. Well, for tonight, we'll sign off. Thank you guys for joining us. I'll take the babies. Thank you. All right, babies, let's go take a nippy nap. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting me. I love you guys so much, and I will see you. Of course, the camera focuses out as I'm going to shut up. Shut this off. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys.